Hi there, thanks for checking out our repair channel. If this is the first time you've ever seen one of our videos or found one of our videos, well, I appreciate you finding us for one. And if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, we'd appreciate that too. If you like these kind of videos, like this kind of stuff, just hit that like button and if you like the video. Um, what this video is going to be about is a kind of a little show and tell of this particular unit. It's one we just worked on for a customer here recently and uh, it's all fixed up ready to go um, so we're gonna get this back to the guy and let him put it to use um, pretty good size unit this is a stay fix m36r this is a uh, if you look down here uh, 36 output joules or output energy whatever are 54 stored so it packs uh, pretty good little wallop to it this is a pretty stout unit uh, i believe m stands for mains which means ac plug-in power 36 is related to the output energy joules and r stands for remote so this is one of their uh units that you can um use a remote control with uh to turn your uh, fence uh on and off from the fence or from anywhere on the fence um this is um Speedrite makes a an, an equivalent unit called a Speedrite 36,000 or 36,000 R. I don't remember if they have the R on the end of that one or not, but that's the red case version of a of a Stay Fix M36R. The same exact guts on the inside, just a different sticker on the front here. Um, it's a pretty uh, slick unit. These are pretty pretty reliable. Um, they go for you know excluding lightning. These things uh, run you typically uh, ten years or better. Um, you know, I've seen it be a little less than that, but typically you get 10 plus years out of one. Um, I don't remember how old this one was, uh, had a sticker on the inside, but I don't remember what the sticker said now. I didn't pay attention to it. I saw it sitting, saw the sticker on there, but I didn't, I didn't look close at it. I just started working on it. So I didn't really care how old it was when he fixed it. So, but, um, if you got one of these things, you know, uh, any of the stay fixed units, we can typically almost fix all of them uh some of the old ones are getting a little harder to fix or if you can fix them they're getting a little cost prohibitive to fix because of uh, uh when you change out or repair one part you got to repair a few other parts to go along with it so you basically turn it into a whole other model and anytime you add all the parts up and put a little bit of labor in it and some shipping both ways you could just buy yourself a, a new one so some of the old um, m12s and M18s and stuff like that are getting a little slimmer and harder to work on because of lack of parts. Uh, some parts from are still available, no, but not everything, that sort of thing. So, well, this unit is, they're using, it can be run off of 110 and, or 220 volt or 240 volt, whatever. Because on the back of it, because I got it here, I forgot about that when I got it. I got it here, it had this plug on it. This is a, a 220 volt plug. As you can see, one tab is vertical and one tab is horizontal. Sometimes you look at your outlet and if you're here in the States, North America, you'll have two you know, vertical slots on there for your plug. But you'll see one of them has a little perpendicular horizontal line uh, going next to it. That's for one of these plugs. So those can be wired up as 220. This is just a another variation of a uh, you know Americanized 220, 240 volt plug. And uh, I saw them, I'm like, oh, shit. I said, because I ordered parts for it. I'm like, damn, is this thing, uh, is there two different versions of this thing? Because I, 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 I put down the part I wanted and said, okay, we'll get it coming. But um, I, uh, was, I was like, God, I ordered the 110 volt because I didn't realize the plug was 220. I was like, well, let me just, before I started calling and asking questions, I looked at the back of it, at the sticker here, and it says 100. 240 volt input 50 to 60 hertz so i knew right then and there okay this thing can the boards in here can run off of 220 or 240 you just got to make sure your outlet's wired right for whatever you're trying to do and or you have the right kind of plug on there and i've got this power supply that we use here for um uh for doing converting uh 220 to 240 or 120 to 240 whatever you want to call it and so we're going to Hook it up here and power it up. So 
Snip that down, make sure they touch each other. So what's nice about this thing, it's um, got a row of lights on here. It starts off, got two, three green, or two, three reds, and goes up here and gets two, you know, the rest of them are green, except for this very last batch right here. That's, I think, two things that what that does. It does stuff with the remote control a little bit where it touches, hey, you're on standby. That's turned off. And it also does some error code flashing light uh, symptoms. It tells you, hey, there's a problem. You know, this thing kind of monitors itself. There's a control board, circuit board in there that goes in here. And uh, it's actually what these lights are mounted to on inside here. And that circuit board has a lot of software and chips and monitoring devices on there. And it basically keeps tabs on the unit itself, it keeps tabs on the fence and ground and what's being effective, you know, out there, what's shorting it out, how clean or dirty the fence is, all that kind of fun stuff. And, uh, that um, that's that board does inside there, but um, it also monitors the unit. So if there's something goes wrong, it blurts out a little uh, flash on code on there, which I don't know what any of that means. It just means something's wrong with it. So you know you can unplug it from the fence and ground, plug plug it from the wall, give it about a couple minutes to kind of settle down, maybe reset itself. Sometimes it works, most times it doesn't. Plug it back in. If it goes a flashing across here and starts clicking and pulsing, let it run a little while. If it goes back and does the same thing again, 90% of the time something wrong inside. But uh, but we're going to power this on. So you can see it flashing right along there. And that little gauge is um, kind of a fence performance gauge so if you got a pretty good uh, clean fence should go all the way up into the upper green or all the way to the green right there if you get some problems in the fence it might drop down to here or down to here or here you know still clicking uh, that typically means you got a bad short but if you're not sure if you walk the fence you know this does a lot of fence but if you walk the fence line drove around and you don't see anything touching or whatever um, you unhook the unit from the ground and fence, plug it back in. If it goes way up high, then there's usually a problem out there on the fence. If it stays down in the lower green or red or whatever, then there's then there's definitely a problem with this thing. We're going to put a tester across here. We're getting a little over 9,000 volts. We get 9.3 kV. So a little, little over 9,000 volts. I'm going to get a, um, I've got a 150 ohm 20 watt resistor. Turn this off for a second. The closer you get to zero ohms, the worse the short is, the harder it is on, on a unit. So we're at 150 ohms. It's a pretty decent load for most units, but this being a bigger joule unit, it's going to drag it down, but it should still run pretty hot. So we're going to put 150 ohm load on this, uh, on this unit. And I imagine the lights aren't going to go, it may go all the way to the top green. I don't think it will. I think it's going to come down in here somewhere, but I think it's still going to be above the reds. And we're going to see what the voltage reads on here. And just to kind of compare what it was with nothing hooked up. And what it is with a 150 ohm load, which is pretty heavy load across fencing ground. So it does tell me we've got something going on here, but let's put the tester on there. We're still getting 9,000 volts, but seems a little odd. Turn it off for a second. I want to um, let's this load tester went bad that we use. Let me um, let me test across it real quick. Oh god damn! That load tester is freaking hot. That big resistor, man, it burned the hell out of me. So let's see what it says. Oh, this is 150 ohms. 
I'll show you. 153, I guess to be exact. 154, roughly, ohms. So, and it barely affected that unit. I mean, it, it showed a little thing up here. So, hey, you got a, something bothering me out here. But as you can see, the voltage still stayed at like 9,000 volts. But God dang, that I, I could smell something hot. I picked it up like this, and it's still pretty hot. I picked it up, and I was like, gosh dang, man. It was, uh, I mean, it's still warm. And I'm not going to, I can't hold it there. But it's like putting a hand on a somewhat hot light bulb. You know, not a super hot light bulb, but one you don't want to keep your hand on there real, real long because it's going to hurt eventually. But that resistor there got really warm. It's still good, and it didn't drag it down. And the reason why it got hot because, you know, it's, this is that resistor is putting a load across you, and this thing's powering through it. And by the byproduct of electricity and loads is, is heat, like a light bulb. So that's why that resistor got so hot. Let's take a. Um, oh, we can do it with this. We're going to touch the ground, get real close to the full power terminal, and we'll. See the spark it jumps. Go hit the ground. Get really close to the hot terminal. That's a nice high current sharp shock uh, from that unit. So, um, pretty, pretty stout unit. Um, there's not really other, I mean, the only other brand, there's only about, excluding speed right, there's not only two other brands that really get into this jewel range, and that's Gallagher and Cyclops. Uh, Gallagher makes the M5800i, which is a 58 stored, which is basically the, the competitor model to this one. The Cyclops makes the uh, Cyclops Boss, which I think is like a 41 output or stored jewel, like 36 stores, something like that. So it's about a notch below this one. No, but Cyclops Boss is a real good unit too. But um, yeah, that's a pretty pretty hot unit. Um, you know, put out a quite a bit of power. Uh, and they, but they're fixable. You know, they can be fixed. They're not. Cheapest to buy, you know, these things sell for, at least here in the United States, sell for about a, about $1,400, give or take 50 bucks. Uh, no matter if you went to the Stay Fix M36R, the Speedrite 36,000R, or 30, whatever it is, 36,000, whatever. Um, they're about $1,300, $1,400, maybe a little higher, but they're usually, they're over $1,000 easily. But you're paying for the power, you know, more or less, and the name a little bit, and the... Um, the uh, capabilities and what this can do, the remote control technology that's in. So you pay for some other stuff besides just the power. But this uh, packs quite a punch. So, but I hope that you like this stuff, like these videos. You know, if you've got one of these or your neighbor's got one or your dad has one, whatever, um, look us up. All of our information is down below. It's uh, fencerfixer.com is our website and fencer and fixer is both spelled with an F as in Frank, but there's a link down in the description area you can click on and take it right to our site. We give free estimates on anything that comes into us, no matter how old or new it is. Uh, and we give 18 month repair warranties on anything that we work on, no matter how old it is. So, um, and we, we, we cover lightning damage part of our repair warranty. So anything that we repair in a unit has 18 month warranty as long as it's not bugs or or water or you know got drop kicked by a mule fell out of the back of the truck ran over by a tractor that kind of stuff well if the thing just goes bad because of you know bad luck i guess or just mount you know bad electronics or whatever it goes haywire for that reason then um we well uh we can't cover that stuff but we'll cover you know malfunctions of a unit because of whatever and lightning is part of our warranty on our repairs but anyways until we do another video of how one works or how to fix one we will see you guys later on